Rafa Nadal is out in Madrid. Sasha Zverev, I had a funny feeling. I told you guys in the last video, I had a funny feeling. Sasha Zverev might step up and do it. These were the conditions for him to do it if he's going to beat Rafa on clay. Uh, he's won this tournament before. In fact, it was the last Masters 1000 tournament he won. We knew things were going wrong after Rafa, and, and he describes it pretty well here. He says, unjustifiable errors at the worst time times. He also said, in the moments of truth, I've done everything wrong. Serving for 5-3, I've made several mistakes, and then at the 4-3 game, I missed a forehand on break point. Yeah, you can't get away with those. Rafa was up 4-2. He says, when I served at 4-2, I made a disaster, and then another bad game. He goes on to lose that first set. Not much later, one all, facing a break point. Take a look at the fear in the Rafa Nadal camp. That's uh, Rafa's dad, Sebastian Nadal, looking especially nervous, uncomfortable, fearful. But we're used to seeing that. There's a lot of fear if you're sitting in the box in the camp of a, of a big-time player. How many times have us Federer fans seen Mirka looking uh, pretty uncomfortable in the player box, watching on as these guys go through you know, some of the most incredible tests we can imagine. I, I, I can't even imagine the pressure that you feel at this level playing in these big-time matches against some of the best players in the world. What was different this time, though, is not the, the fear in the, the box. The fear in Rafa's game. Been a while since we've seen Rafa Nadal play with so much fear. Now that Sasha Zverev has beat him three times in a row, he's got some good reasons to fear the weapons and the comfort level that Zverev is showing that he has using these weapons against Rafa Nadal. Take a listen. The tennis TV commentators nail it towards the end of the match. He's just so afraid to hit the ball. Yeah, you think of the miss and the first point where he tries to let it go and he misses. So he's so afraid to do that again that he just ends up spinning it halfway up the box. And even under pressure, Zverev, you'd think he's too good to miss that short a ball. Now they're talking about uh, this is... Sasha Zverev serving for the match. The previous point, uh, Rafa had gone for it. They, they say, uh, let me read you the, the quote. He's just so afraid to hit the ball. You think of the miss on the first point. He tried to let it go. Let it go as in, you know, let it fly. Let it rip. He tries to let it go, and he misses. He's so Here's the key. He's so afraid. That's not a part of Rafa's game. Playing with fear, that's what he's so good at is not playing with fear. I know it's Madrid. I know the conditions are much better for Sasha Zverev. It's going to be a lot easier for him to use the big power that he has in his game to hurt Rafa. But still, it's surprising to see Rafa playing with so much fear in his game, even uh, even with this opponent in these conditions. He's so afraid to do that again, to miss another ball when he goes for it, that he spins it halfway up the box, halfway into the service box. That ball is so short. Of course, Sasha Zverev is going to put that away. But not much longer after that, Match points here. I thought this was kind of interesting. What's going on inside Sasha Zverev's shirt? Take a look. It's like he's looking in... Maybe his coach is in there. Where should I hit this serve? In the net. That didn't work. How about at the body, up high? What do you know it worked? Rafa himself said, in these conditions, I got to back up so far. And still, the guy, Sasha Zverev, is getting the ball up above my shoulders. Maybe he's got a cat in there. Or coach. Walkie-talkie. New tattoo. Inspirational tattoo, like Stan the Man. Maybe Sasha looks down at the tattoo. Welcome to Coffee Break Tennis. I am your host, Matt Bradshaw, lover of the game, student of the game. This is the place where the learning never stops, both for me and hopefully for you. Uh, today, we're rip-roaring, ready to go. I've been so excited all day long thinking about making this show because uh, a lot of good tennis today, a lot of questions about what's coming. And uh, hopefully we have the answers. <laughs> I mean, obviously the big question is, does this mean that Rafa's going to lose the French Open? Uh, I don't think so. I think the conditions are so different that it's really not too big of a deal. But uh, we'll read what Rafa said later. Basically said, like, overall I feel good coming out of here, but this loss. And I have one theory, I think. Now if it, that Zverev has beat Rafa three times in a row, including on clay, even if it's in Madrid, I know it's different than at the French Open. Uh, if they cross paths, 
I think a little bit in Rafa's head. Same with Tsitsipas. If he's up two sets to love on Tsitsipas, a little bit in the back of his mind, he'll remember the Australian Open. I know it's it's clay, it's the French, it's a little different. Uh, on today's show, we'll go through some of the stats, uh, what's going on. We'll preview the semifinals, the Final Four in Madrid. And we've got some really good comments on today's show, so let's uh, let's get right into it. Take a look at these stats. Unrafa-like statistics. Put them on the screen. Uh, Rafa, six winners on 17 unforced errors. I don't think Rafa even hit... I'm trying to remember. It took him forever just to hit one forehand winner. Uh, when did that... Did it come in the first... In the second set or late in the first set? I can't remember, but it took a long time. And zoom in on that forehand. Four winners from the forehand. Ten unforced errors. Uh, Sasha Zverev putting up 28 winners on 25 unforced errors. Uh, Sasha Zverev had five double faults. Didn't really matter so much today because he's got four aces. Rafa's got no aces and three double faults. So yeah, Sasha with the doubles, that can really hurt him. If Rafa would have been holding serve today, maybe those five doubles would have been uh, a big problem, but turned out not to be. Uh, Rafa getting 64% of the first serves in. That's a pretty high number, but... If we look at Casper Ruud, who actually had more Rafa-like numbers than Rafa himself today, uh, you'll see, uh, you know, something that Rafa would lo- have liked to do in this match, get a higher percentage, something like 70% of the first serves in, and win a lot more than he did, winning 62 on first. That's that's a lose-lose for Rafa. Winning 50 on second, you can live with, but you got to get, uh, you know, 50 is kind of, if you're under 50, you're in trouble on the second. If you're at 50 or above, you're doing okay. You just got to take care of business on the first serve. Sasha Zverev, 62% first serves in. That's a little bit lower than Rafa, but it, it doesn't matter. When you're winning over 80, you only need about 60% of the first serves in. That's really uh, the magic number for success on the first serve. 43 on the second serve wasn't as big of a deal today for Sasha Zverev because uh, he was pummeling the Rafa game when he was serving. Uh, real quick, I want to show you guys, we were talking about you know uh, how it's a better place for servers here. Take a look at this ace chart that I saw on the Tennis TV broadcast today. John Isner, who Dominic T- team described as this, he's like a goalkeeper. You're facing a penalty. You are when you return to serve. Excuse me. You either have to guess or hope that he's missing the first serve. It's just pure luck. Actually, to return it, it's like 50-50 chance. That's why it's so, so tough. 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 I don't know how he says tough. Uh, anyways, I thought that was interesting, but l- let's look at who's popping the aces here. We talked about Bublik being kind of curious like and this is before he played his match, which he lost today, the Casper Rude. He already had 32 aces. This guy is a spot hitter. Yeah, Berrettini's got a big serve. Zverev's got a big serve, but look at them. They're down at 12 before their matches today, so I guess Sasha Zverev, he hit four aces, puts him at 16. Rafa Nadal on the ace chart, only two. Rafa... Not hitting a lot of aces no matter where the heck he's playing. Uh, anyways, let's look at Casper Ruud's stats, which were much more Rafa-like. Just wanted to show you that ace chart. One, credit John Isner, who almost beat Dominic Team today. Uh, amazing server. One of the best servers of all time, obviously. Uh, Bublik, though, got to give him credit. A good run here in Madrid for Sasha Bublik and 32 aces. The guy's got a real a special serve so we'll we'll enjoy seeing guys like him in the future uh casper rude out rafa rafa today uh he was great didn't play rafa obviously but he had a nice win over bublik who was playing pretty well did all of the tricks including this one take a look at this casper rude said you're gonna drop shot me and he flies in there so much so much like rafa so much about casper take a look at this one too casper rude hitting the rafa style lasso over the head followed through forehand uh, Kasparu was awesome, told Sasha Bublik to take his, uh, he did a, a underhand serve, and also uh, Kasparu won that point too, it was a great underhand serve, perfectly disguised, uh, like a perfect drop shot, Kasparu is just flying, really feeling the confidence, and uh, told Bublik to go squeeze cheese on that one, 19 winners on 4 unforced errors, one of them was a double fault, so only 3 times did Kasparu miss uh, a forehand or a backhand as an unforced error with 19 winners. That's usually the kind of stuff we see from Rafa on the clay. Also, another Rafa-like statistic, going to net only at the perfect times, 10 for 11 at the net. You look at Bublik, he's playing pretty good, 23 winners and 21 unforced errors. Bad choices on when to go to net, mostly doing that later in the match when he's getting desperate. 
uh, three for 12. Christian Green, let's look at the uh, second set from Christian Green today, losing to Matteo Berrettini. He had similar numbers to Casper Ruud, similar to that Rafa style of playing on clay in the first set, but in the second set, it all fell apart. Six winners on 14 unforced errors. Uh, that was how it went down today. Casper Ruud was just the most steady player of the day. Uh, Dominic team. Different situation for him having to deal with John Isner. That's really just a survival match, which we know uh, from watching over the years. The big three, Dominic team, Andy Murray, they know how to uh, handle it when you run into someone like a John Isner late stages at a big tournament. And, then of course, the big story, Rafa losing to Sasha Zverev. That, that was the, the tale of uh, the quarterfinals today. Really impressed with Casper Ruud. But take a look at this. He did get smacked by Carlos Alcaraz, so don't forget, as good as uh, as good as Casper Ruud is, that uh, Alcaraz kid, when he has a good day, he's playing pretty well. Maybe it was a bad day for Casper Ruud, but took him out pretty easy not that long ago. So, Christian Green ran out of gas, but Matteo Berrettini stepped up, hit a lot of great shots when he needed it to climb out of that hole. Looked like he was going to lose that for the first half of the match. Uh, let's take a look at what Sasha, I mean, excuse me, what Rafa Nadal said about his loss against uh, Alexander Zverev. A little bit more on that. We'll take a look at the draw and then read some comments and get out of here. Uh, Rafa on Sasha Zverev loss. It's very difficult to understand. Now, here's the hope, obviously, for the Raw fans out there. Madrid plays very different than the French Open. Rafa typically doesn't do as well here historically, then goes on to win the French. Uh, a lot of time he'll win Rome and the French back to back. So next week is crucial for Rafa. Rome is where the conditions are the closest to the French Open of all these tune-up events on the clay. So very important for Rafa to uh, to get a good good feelings while he's there. Uh, but he's leaving Madrid with overall positive feelings, is what Rafa says here. But at the same time, with the ugly feeling of having played a match like this today against a great player. Now the key is and Rafa says it. When you play someone as good as Sasha Zverev, there's just certain levels that you can't let your game drop to. And Rafa, unfortunately, did that today. Uh, a lot of it's the conditions. I, I think some nerves were at play, playing with fear in the game. That definitely is uh, something Rafa does so well to not allow into his mind. I think it definitely happened a little bit this time. Uh, he said, I felt like I was playing better for much of the first set, but after a couple of errors, unjustifiable errors at the worst times, I found myself down a set. The outlook of the match changed from there. I knew that a lot of suffering was waiting for me in the second set. And that's an interesting comment, I think, from uh, Rafa Nadal saying, you know, I think what he means is the way he lost that first set to be in control of it and then to have Zverev all of a sudden win the first set, you, you know that this guy, he's always dangerous. And I'm sure Rafa, you know, that's part of the game plan. You can't let Zverev get on a roll. You can't let Zverev start ripping aces and, uh, you know, big winners and bullying you off of his own serve. And you especially don't want to let the guy start bullying you when you're serving, if you're uh, not hitting quality first serves or if they're, you know, really getting into your second serves and uh, attacking you there. So Rafa knows that that's key. And when he lets a guy like Sasha Zverev with that kind of weaponry and firepower get back into the first set, he knows, as he said, uh, a lot of suffering is waiting on the other side in the second set because now this guy's on fire. He's really uh, got the belief. One of the things Rafa does so well, the big three in general, they do so well is they they suck the belief out of the opponents. No matter how talented, the more young and talented and uh, promising of a future you have, the more the big three tend to uh, smush you right away from the beginning. Uh, anyways... That's enough of that. Put the draw on the screen. What is going on here in Madrid now that the big man himself, Rafa Nadal, is out? Well, we're going to see Casper Rudeboy play Matteo Berrettini. Uh, Casper just went up against Bublik, who's you know bringing big shots, serving better. So Berrettini... He's going to hit big serves, but he's not going to nail the spots quite as well as Bublik. He's not hitting the 30-something aces like Bublik was. Uh, Berrettini, to be fair, though, he just played uh, Christian Green. He's going to, you know, play in similar style to what Casper Ruud will play. But I think Casper Ruud is playing better than Green was. And I'm not sure that Berrettini is playing so, so much better than what Bublik was uh, bringing. Now, Bublik did make more boneheaded decisions and uh, lose points that maybe he shouldn't have lost. 
Maybe got a little wary. Maybe Berrettini is going to battle harder. Maybe he actually likes playing tennis. Bublik has said that he just does it for the money. He's not a he doesn't love tennis. If he hadn't already earned a lot more money than he has, he would retire right away. I don't know what his number is. Curious. What is the number of Bublik? Maybe he wants to get to a, a fifty million, maybe a billion. Federer's almost at a billion. Maybe Bublik's he might have to play a long time if he's gonna get to a billion. So I like Casparu to take out Berrettini, but Berrettini is a guy trying to prove to the world that he belongs staying. He deserves to stay in the top ten. Thought the way he handled Christian Green today. The way uh, he fought that off felt like a top 10 player to me. So uh, hats off to Matteo Berrettini. Dominic team, tricky match with John Isner. We know the clay credentials of Dominic team. Uh, I like him against Sasha Zverev, but normally, right? Normally I like him against Sasha Zverev on the clay. But not here, because we already know Sasha Zverev, they've played before in a final. Sasha Zverev beat him. That was his last Masters 1000 victory for uh, for Zverev. And we know, of course, that Dominic Team is not at his best, but he's looking better than a lot of people expected him to. So I'll give him a shot there. But I think we see a Casper Ruud, Sasha Zverev final. Who wins that? <sighs> Casper Ruud, man. I want to invest in him. He's like Dogecoin. He's going up, 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 up. But I think there's a limit in uh, maybe Zverev feeling good and going for it. Uh, maybe that'll be the limit right there. So that's how things are going to wrap up. I was going to say maybe we'll be back tomorrow with another show, but I got a lot going on this weekend. So uh, probably wait till Sunday evening or uh, or Monday, uh, especially. I don't, when is that Rome draw? Do we have a Rome draw yet? We need a Rome draw. I care more about the Rome draw than what happens in Madrid. Shh, don't tell anyone. All right, let's look at some comments, and uh, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, this is not the comment sheet. Here we go. You say 5D. Why well, have uh, 4K when you get 5K? Wait, 5D. That's like 3D. Four-dimensional. Fifth dimension. You say, take us to the fifth dimension. Uh, nice show, Matt. Gen F around the corner. The hype is real. It is real. All the best from... Und die Schweiz, Switzerland. We love Switzerland here at Coffee Break Tennis. Roger that. Uh, next up, Mei Xiang. Did you mention Djokovic is someone who could win Roland Garros? Is he not playing? Did I not mention him? I think I just kind of assumed that everyone knows that he always has a chance to win Roland Garros. Uh, of course Djokovic can win. If I didn't say it, it's not because I was trying to insult the guy or say that he can't win. I just kind of thought everyone knew that already. Uh uh, Serenin Avukati says Zverev just beat Nadal but Nadal is still the big favorite to win the Roland Garros yeah of course that is always true and will be true for quite some time or at least a couple more years I mean these guys you get, you need to see Zverev or Tsitsipas somebody like that just totally give the smack down to Rafa at the French beat him in straight sets for us not to like make him the favorite anymore and even then you're going to be tempted to say oh that was a fluke year uh, Brandon Y says, Sasha Zverev plays his best in the big matches. That's why I know he will win a slam. He's a big match player. His biggest trouble is making it past the first few rounds. And then El Nino, the Spanish raging bull, says, that's the problem. Good point both ways, though, because I think Zverev is a big-time match winning, uh, a, a big match player, as he said here. And I think it's interesting because, uh, like uh, some of you may know, I've been reading the Rafa Nadal book. It's a little old now. It's about a 10-year-old book. I think it came out in 2010, 2011. But I've been reading that Rafa Nadal, Nadal uh, book, and he says when he played a, a first big-time Davis Cup tie, Moya was number one. Who's going to play singles? You got Tommy Robredo, who at the time I believe is 13 in the world, and you got Juan Carlos, the coach of Carlos Alcaraz, Juan Carlos Ferrero. And he has been number one in the world. They're playing on clay. They're playing USA. This is back when people still cared about Davis Cup. There's a massive crowd there. They choose to play Moya in the one spot for singles. And Rafa, young teenager Rafa, in the two spot. And Rafa was very worried about uh, playing this match. He thought it was an insult to the elders. You know, how, how come uh, Robredo and Juan Carlos Ferrero... Why aren't they playing? You know, I'm just some teenager. Sure, I'm good on clay, but Ferrero's already won a French Open. And uh, Robredo's one of the best clay court players in the world right now. So Rafa was kind of embarrassed that they picked him. Of course, he goes on to beat Andy Roddick in four sets. And afterwards, Roddick said, this guy Nadal is a big match player. And I think Sasha Zverev, as Brandon Y puts here, he is a big match player. 
Unfortunately, he does lose in earlier rounds, and he's been getting better and better at this with time. We always knew Zverev would have a great shot to win a major one day. I don't know if he's going to uh, to do it this year, but it wouldn't shock me, and he's got to like his chances, at the, both the U.S. Open and the French Open. Uh, and, and he's had you know decent results on grass as well. Don't want to say Sasha Zverev is like a Wimbledon favorite, but he could do well there. Uh, Pedya Manasivevich. Sorry, I've tried to say it, Pedya, right? I don't think I said it right. Uh, Kasper Ruud is the reincarnation of David Ferrer. Very difficult opponent. A very difficult opponent to beat. Yeah, I was saying that to a friend of mine the other day I was playing tennis with. And I said, um, you know, think of Kasper Ruud almost as like a David Ferrer. Uh, just, you know, mainly his build. He's about the same size as David Ferrer. And he's just a hustle monster. Very focused. And uh, I think he's going to be around for a while. He's going to be a very difficult opponent to beat as Pedya pointed out. Jim Churchill, no one will be the next Rafa Nadal. 13 French Opens, get real. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And then finally, hit the music, we're going to get out of here. Ed Wong, McDonald's in China is amazing, and so is the Chinese KFC. I was so excited, if you missed it in our last show, around this time, the end of the show, we did a review because Medvedev said he loves McDonald's, but mainly in Russia. He said it's better there. So I was curious, what do they serve in uh, McDonald's Russia? We did a review. Don't miss it. Check it out. I was so excited to see what does Chinese McDonald's have? And I did a Google search on Chinese McDonald's, and this came up. I'm not even going to say it. I don't even want to read it. Just look at your screen. I'm, a, I'm afraid I'll get in trouble if I say the words. They'll flag my channel or something like that. So there is that. That is, that's not a good thing. That's a bad look in Guangzhou. But I hear the food's pretty good. Thank you for coming to Coffee Break Tennis today. Uh, we will be back most likely Monday, maybe Tuesday, depending on uh, when that Rome draw comes out. I don't know yet. It might already be out. And, uh, and uh, of course, we'll catch you up on all the stuff in Madrid and talk about what it means for the French Open. But I'll give you a slight hint. It doesn't mean a whole lot because the French Open plays very, very different. Although, we could take away from this that uh, we can invest a little more stock in Casper Ruud and Sasha Zverev when we go to the French in a few weeks. See ya! Casper Ruud boy! Casper Ruud boy! He likes the Pokemon! He likes the Pikachu! He likes to play the tennis for me and you, yeah! Casper Ruud boy! Casper Ruud boy! He likes to hit the backhand, he likes to hit the serve, he likes to give the people what the tennis fans deserve, yeah. Casper Root Boy, Casper Root Boy, why you got to be so rude? Why?